Hello, Communication 160 students. Today, we are going to talk about Chapter 4, Conceptualization and Operationalization or Measurement. Conceptualization is a process in which we specify what we mean by a term. Conceptualization is a minds-on process, sometimes we call a thinking process. In deductive research, Conceptualization helps us specify variables that can be used in testable hypotheses. In inductive research, conceptualization is an important part of the process used to make sense of the related observations. Conceptual definition democracy can be freedom, can be the right to vote. can be the equality. Now you can see that a democracy can be meant by different, uh, different ways, uh, different uh, concepts. So what is the shared understanding of democracy? And that is the challenge. So the, we are going through this process of conceptualization to finalize what is democracy. And what is our shared meanings of democracy? And that is the conceptualization all about. Because many times we have so many terms, so many interpretations, we cannot reach the shared meanings. So the conceptualization is trying through this uh, thinking process to reach the agreement of our understanding about certain concept. Observations can be used to measure characteristics of individuals and events and the places. The observation may be the primary form of measurement in a study, or they may supplement uh, measures obtained through questioning. Direct observations can be used as indicators of some concepts, and observations may also supplement data collected in an interview study. Look at those particular questions. So sometimes people have the tendency to answer questions in a socially approved ways. And here we ask people how frequent they go to church. And there's a self-reported and answers, and there's observed answers. Self-reported and observed. As you can see that the self-report and clearly rank much higher than observed uh, the data. So 33 versus 20, and here 51 versus 28. So clearly talking about going to church and self-reported is ranked much higher than those observed the data. So that is tell you tell us that sometimes people tend to provide uh, better answers more uh, kind of tendency to see more is uh, to talk about uh, socially approved behaviors. Now let's talk about the levels of measurement. In measurement in operationalization, there's uh, four levels of measurement. So the number one is called nominal level. So nominal level is a, a measurement referred to the variables is in the categorical variables. For example, like American, and here either you're American or you're Canadian, or you're British, Chinese, and uh, Mexican. And then second one is called ordinal level measurement. In ordinal level measurement, so you are you have a ranking order. You have a low versus high. So in a way, you can see the uh, you can see a ranking order within that. Next one is called interval level. Interval level measurement. You have this equal interval, but you do not have a true zero point. The example like that can be temperature or people's IQ test. So in a way, that is each kind of interval is the same. For example, like 10 uh, degree temperature to 20 
twenty to thirty. So the deviation or interval will be the same, which is a ten degrees. But it does not have a true zero point. It does not mean that zero temperature means no temperature at all. Last one is called the ratio level measurement. So this this time they have the true zero point. In the same time, it has、uh, the equal intervals, like interval level variables. Examples can be a GPA. Someone can have a true zero point GPA, and then、uh, like the number of hours watching TV. So you can watch zero hours, one hour, two hours, and so on and so forth. There are two guidelines to use in measurement. One is called mutually exclusive, and the other one is called exhaustive. A variable's attributes and values are mutually exclusive if every case can have only one attribute. For example, if we talk about salary, say twenty thousand to thirty thousand, thirty thousand. To fifty thousand. Clearly, this is not mutually exclusive. The reason is that the person who is earning thirty thousand can select either one or two because they are all thirty thousand. So, in order to make this a mutually exclusive, you have to change this into thirty thousand and a one dollar, or you can change this one into twenty nine. Thousand nine nine nine. Either way can be done. The second principle is called、uh, exhaustive. That means when we use that, we want to make sure that every case can be classified into one of the categories. For example, if we ask people, how often do you use、uh, media? So we have,、uh, say, television. Radio and、uh, internet. Do you think this measurement is exhaustive? How about、uh, newspaper, print media, books, magazines? So clearly, it's not exhaustive. In order to make this exhaustive, so then we need to add others. So this others is very important to make this measurement. Exhaustive. In measurement, we have this a two major kind of criteria to make sure that is our measurement is very sound. One is called called validity. One is called reliability. So validity refer to measure what we intend to measure. Reliability refer to The consistency, a measurement can consistent give us the same results. So, so that is the、uh, two major criteria. In face、uh, in validity, there's a a number of、uh, subcategories of validity. For example, we have face validity, content validity, criterion validity. Concurrent validity and predictive validity. All these validity are used in subcategories, but the fundamental, the meaning of these validity refer to what we intend to measure. So measure the things what we intend to measure. Another another way to look at that is that we want to hit the target. So if you think about that, you want to. Hit the target, so that target hitting is the validity. Reliability means that consistency. So reliability means that a measurement procedure yields consistent score when the phenomenon being measured is not changing. Using the kind of target kind of figures, so if validity is hit the target. And the reliability is you do the things is always hitting a one spot consistently, that will be called reliability. So something or measurement reliable 
may not be valid. So that's there's that possibility. There's a four types of uh, measures we can use to uh, make sure that is our uh, our measurement is reliable. So one is called test retest reliability, inter item reliability, altern alternate forms reliability, and inter observer reliability. And that's the end of uh, the chapter 4.